Welcome to this lecture of Digital Electronics, EI207. In this lecture, we will, we will see the remaining logic families. So, the logic families which we are going to discuss in this lecture are TTL, that is transistor transistor logic. Then, we will discuss the emitter coupled logic, and later on, we will discuss about the CMOS logic family. So, if we talk about the uh, transistor transistor logic family, then uh, this is the one of the most popular logic family and uh, before the invention of uh, CMOS logic families so this was the most popular logic family mm -hmm. and uh, the ICs this particular logic family is available in the IC series of like 5400 and 7400 so if you find any uh, this 5400 series IC or 7400 IC so then uh, uh, you can like uh, uh, by its number only you can know that it is an, a TTL IC okay so the TTL uh, the basic gate for the TTL is your NAND gate and the BC where this TTL or uh, circuit operates in multiple modes so one mode is called the to totem pole mode the other one is called the open connector configuration and the third mode is called the tri-state mode okay so uh, so these are the three high impedance mode or the tri-state mode. So these are the three uh, modes in which your TTL can work. So we will try to understand the totem pole first and uh, with the help of that we will try to also understand the other modes. So let us try to understand the uh, working principle of your uh, this TTL circuit and then we will also understand that why it is called a totem pole and uh, how you can make from the same circuit uh, the other configurations. So, you see, now this is the basic circuit for your, you can understand the arrangement. So, the basic circuit arrangement is something like this. So, let me magnify it. And this arrangement is uh, helpful. Uh, I mean, it gives certain advantages. So, when you use it as a totem pole, then it has certain advantages. When you use it in open collector, then it offers certain other advantages. And when we use it in tri-state or high impedance mode then also it offers certain other uh, advantages so we'll see that how to operate it in different modes so uh, here the the input transistor is a multi-emitter transistor so when we say it is a multi-emitter transistor it means in the same configuration we uh, in the same uh, like circuit for the same transistor we uh, we make multiple emitters so with the help of this multi-parameter what happens we don't have to make uh, we can reduce the uh, we can save the area okay and uh, multiple emitters works as multiple transistors then so what happens we multiple inputs can be applied to those multiple emitters so what happens uh, we have like uh, we'll try to verify its functionality that how it works so this is the circuit arrangement which we use for our TTL operation so you can see that uh, on the input side, so on the multiple side, so the input side, you can see that this is the transistor Q1, and this transistor has multiple inputs. So here we are, we are going to apply our input voltages here. Okay, and these are the resistances. So this R1 is one of the resistance with certain value four kilo ohms. And then these are the other resistances. And apart from that, uh, we have like certain other transistors. So this is transistor Q2. This is transistor Q3. This is one of the diodes and this is the another transistor Q4. From here, uh, we take the output and this is one more resistor. So let's try to understand the operation of the circuit. So what happens is, uh, let's say, uh, we'll understand uh, that what happens if we apply all the four possible combinations at the, in these two inputs. So if we have two inputs, then we can have four possible combinations as you know. So if both the inputs are 0, 0, uh, so what happens? Because this is your... Uh, NPN transistor so this is an NPN transistor right so in this NPN transistor what happens that uh, when this either of this either both of them both the inputs or either one of them one of the input is 0 0 so uh, in all these three cases what happens this particular whichever input is low uh, so base emitter junction becomes forward bias because this voltage is low and this voltage is high and this is a NPN transistor. So this terminal base is P and it is at high voltage. So this base emitter junction becomes forward bias. And if this base emitter junction becomes forward bias, then obviously 
the uh, this emitter collector voltage is very low so if this emitter collector voltage is small then obviously this q2 will not get sufficient voltage to uh, to make it forward bias if this is off so which means that q2 will be off so if q2 is off so when q1 is on the base emitter junction of uh, this is on so what happens q2 is off so if q2 is off at that time your this voltage because this is off so there is no current in this path so then your q3 becomes on okay sorry so this voltage is uh, equal to like this vcc because this voltage is like there is no drop in this path so what happens uh, this point is equal to this vcc voltage now when this is high voltage so this this drives q3 on okay whereas this voltage is like uh, although high but this is off so this transistor will q4 will be on because it will not get any voltage here in this case okay so q4 is on q4 is off and q3 is on so if q3 is on then the output terminal gets connected uh, gets connected to vcc via this q3 and d1 so you can see that when either of this inputs or both of the inputs are zero zero then this output is connected to vcc via q3 and d1 and therefore the output is high in this case right so output becomes high in this case so you see in all these three cases the output is one right so we can we understood all these three cases now uh, in the last case what happens that when both the inputs are one one uh, so if this like this is five volt and this is also high so this two terminals base and emitter are almost at the same potential so then this base emitter junction of this q1 is for reverse bias okay so if it is reverse bias then uh, you see this will not be this will not work ba base emitter junction of q1 is reverse bias but simultaneously you can see that uh, the collector of the q1 is like uh, if you see from here q2 base so it is just at 0.7 volt or like 0.7 volt plus this voltage drop okay above this q1 and this potential is vcc and this is like this this is not vcc this is smaller than vcc so what happens this base collector junction becomes base collector junction becomes forward bias whereas base emitter junction is reverse bias so if your base collector junction is forward bias so then your this q2 becomes on okay so if q2 is on then you can see that this voltage so th there will be a short circuit almost short circuit between these two voltages and if this is there is a short circuit between these two voltages then this voltage is going to be directly applied here okay so this voltage is so we know that because of this q4 is on and if q4 is on so when q4 is on q3 is off so if q4 is on then the output gets connected to ground via q4 and as the output gets connected to ground via q4 therefore output is zero in this case so we understand that when this output will be low only then both the inputs are high so uh, from this truth table we understand that if we implement this basic circuit then it will be equal to our nand gate so that is why it is called that our uh, uh, TTL basic TTL gate is phenomenal gate is the NAND gate okay so this is what the operation of your circuit now let us see that uh, we understand the operation so now move on, moving on to the another slide then this is what I have explained you that uh, how the operation takes place Acha. so apart from this uh, we have to discuss one more thing that this configuration which we have seen in the last slide so this configuration is your what is called as this configuration in which you see there are uh, this is the output uh, branch so from where which you are taking the from uh, from where you are taking the output so this uh, this particularly branch in which q3 q4 and d1 are connected including a resistance so uh, you see this two transistors are connected this q3 is connected over the q4 so they are stacked over the one another so q3 is over d1 and d1 and q3 and d1 are over q4 so this this arrangement particularly because they are uh, stacked one over the other that is why it is called the 
totem pole output. Okay, so this is what the EZN is. Now, in this arrangement, what happens? This D1 resistance, this D1 diode assures that these two transistors, Q3 and Q4, does not get on simultaneously. Okay, so we have seen already that when Q3 is on, okay, Q3 was off, and when Q4 was on, at that time Q3 is on. And, and you can also understand the same logic that why this both the uh, Q3 and Q4 cannot be on simultaneously by understanding that uh, this particular voltage okay, is like this voltage is uh, whatever voltage will require here is this voltage okay this voltage plus 0.7 and this voltage so simultaneously this voltage cannot be uh, cannot be high and you can understand that that is what is called totem pole and uh, this D1 assures that uh, these two transistors cannot be off, cannot be on simultaneously. Achha, apart from that, uh, this particular arrangement is called the totem pole arrangement when the circuit is connected like this. And in this case, the totem pole offers the advantage that this, as this circuit is not connected simultaneously, this two transistor does not conduct simultaneously. Because of this, this the current flowing through the resistance R3, this output resistance, is zero. And therefore, the power dissipation of this totem pole configuration is very small. Okay, so this is the other advantage of using totem pole. Totem pole. Then, uh, apart from this, there is a, another advantage of using totem pole, and that is that uh, when you uh, this 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 is your this particular Q3 and Q4 works as your emitter uh, this emitter follower. So this emitter follower, if uh, if you if you see the circuit, so this works as an emitter follower. Okay. So uh, this particular arrangement in the emitter follower, what happens? This Q3 works as an emitter follower, and because of this, the emitter follower offers very low output impedance. Okay, because you can see that in this case there is a uh, this uh, only the uh, uh, this transistor is there. So as the uh, output resistance is very small, output impedance is very small uh, for Q3 for the emitter follower case. Then because of that, uh, this particular configuration have very uh, fast switching okay so the speed is very high compared to uh, the other logic family okay the other which we have studied earlier so these two are the advantages of using uh, totem pole configuration so apart from totem pole the same configuration if is not used with q3 and d1 okay and the collector of q4 is directly connected to the uh, output resistance okay so this q3 and Q, uh, d4 are not there so then this configuration is called here open collector configuration okay so then it is called open collector configuration Achha, with the totem pole configuration there is one problem so what is that problem that problem is that if there are two totem pole configurations and if you uh, disconnect the output of the totem pole configurations then uh, it will be it will not work as a AND gate okay whereas if you connect the uh, and this you know, uh, output of two totem pole configurations then they are like wired and they, they are called wired and because if this is one gate it is offering and then the out the other gate is also there so if you connect them so then that will be why if this output is let's say y1 and the other output is y2 so then if you wire them together if you connect them together then if it is an open collector then it will give you y1 dot y2 but uh, the uh, this particular type of connection the wired direct wired connection is not allowed in case of totem pole configuration okay so this is what the disadvantage of totem pole configuration Achha. apart from that there is third arrangement there is also third arrangement in which you can use this circuit but to use the circuit in that arrangement we have to modify it little bit so what we do is we include one more diode here from the base of q3 to uh, the uh, I mean, to another input which is an enable input so by including that what we do we short circuit this by short circuit this branch so just we avoid this branch and because of this what happens this q3 uh, we get the advantage of both the totem pole and the open collector configuration in case of the high impedance state okay so there is some arrangement i just uh, forgot to include that in these slides so you can find it from the book that there is a small modification where we include a diode here and we include a enable branch so by by enabling that diode that external that another diode what we do is the idea is we just uh, short circuit that path uh, we avoid the uh, this path so then simultaneously this q3 and q4 becomes off simultaneously and because of this 
we get the advantage of both Q, uh, this pro, uh, totem pole and the open connector configuration. Okay. So this was about the totem pole configuration and let us see the, uh, so this was the working, uh, you can understand the working, I have uh, done it here from the, the slides, you can understand the working, it is same as what we have uh, studied, so um, to continue, the characteristics, so the characteristics, the TTL has uh, higher speed than diode transistor logic, the its uh, its noise immunity is slightly low, then the power dissipation is lower than the other uh, configurations. It has moderate fan out, not very high fan out, but a moderate fan out. Then the propagation delay time is approximately 5 to 15 nanoseconds. Right? And these are the important characteristics. So, uh, if you talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, log this logic family TTL over the other logic families, so the TTL is less sensitive to electrostatic discharge okay so it is like less sensitive to the damage from electrostatic discharge than the CMOS devices so CMOS devices are very sensitive to uh, electrostatic discharge hmm? compared to the ECL circuits TTL uses less power and has easier design rules so emitter coupled logic we will see later on so that uh, this is like uses less power and uh, it has uh, like easy to design okay then this particular logic family is uh, more suited for your bipolar integrated circuits because uh, this additional inputs to gate merely require additional emitters because all the emitters are uh, fabricated in a single transistor q1 so because of that you don't require uh, more emitters then. Okay, additional inputs are not required in this case then the disadvantages of uh, this logic family is that TTL devices consume substantially more power than CMOS devices. So CMOS devices uh, have almost, uh, you can say it is, it consumes very less power in, almost zero power in uh, static mode. Okay, So this is what the mm, very uh, important thing of CMOS power circuits. Then the other disadvantages that they are not, they are fast, but they are not very fast compared to ECL because ECL is known as the fastest logic family okay so this is not the fastest one you increase the speed you can increase the speed with the help of this but you cannot make it fastest then the output impedance uh, we have already discussed about this so the output structure of the TTL device uh, the output impedance is asymmetrical between the high and the low state so we have already seen that uh, in one of the case uh, Q3 forms the emitter follower and because of which it offers the very low output impedance but when q4 the circuit the output gets uh, gets connected to ground via q4 in that case the impedance is not very uh, low and uh, that is why this that is what this point says that the asymmetric that the output impedance is asymmetrical okay and because of which it is like this circuit is unsuitable for your transmission lines for driving the transmission lines or that or that in the worst case scenario the driving capability of the circuit will not will be affected or will not be very good okay these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of your uh, this particular logic family now so this logic family is uh, the emitter coupled logic family so an emitter coupled logic family uh, will make uh, the emitter the basic circuit is uh, this circuit so you see the arrangement so in this arrangement what we do is uh, there is like say two transistors q1 and q2 and uh, these are the resistances and there is one input only b so basically this circuit works as an inverter okay so the basic building block is inverter here so what we do is this is your v in v uh, v in uh, you can make other circuits we can make other circuits with the help of this like the nor or the or but the point is Whenever we make uh, any circuit with the help of emitter coupled logic, the outputs which we get are exactly opposite of each other. Okay, so uh, there are two outputs which you have in emitter coupled logic. So whatever input you apply here, so on the one output it will be same as the other uh, the input, and whereas on the other output, I mean these two outputs will be always complement of each other. So if we implement OR logic, so then this will be our let's say OR V output will be OR. So the other will be your NOR logic. Okay. So uh, in this case, 
we get both the logics simultaneously okay so here we'll get a buffer as well as the inverter because if we are implementing the inverter so we have two uh, we uh, simultaneously apply uh, gets two logic so let's see how the circuit works so here in this case let's say we apply some voltage so there is a slight change and this is uh, one of the fastest logic this is the fastest logic family okay emitter coupled logic is the fastest logic family and the reason uh, because of which it is fastest is that it do not have any saturation uh, charge uh, or the stored charge in it so the saturation there is no saturation in this logic family and because of this uh, this because of that this is the fastest logic family so in this case what happens let's try to understand the working of this so uh, let us see that let's assume that uh, the logic high and logic low level are very close to each other and this is what the reason is that it do not uh, store much charge and the saturation uh, it do not go into the saturation because these voltage levels are very close to each other okay so the lo logic high and logic low levels are let's say 4.4 and 3.6 volts okay respectively so uh, when we apply the v in is the input of the gate and v out minus is the inverted version and v in of v in and v out plus is the complement of v out minus so this is what uh, i have already, already told you now uh, if we apply let's say high voltage here 4.4 volts here so then what will happen our this transistor q1 will be on okay because and you see when this transistor because uh, this is like it's some voltage which is just above this voltage if there is some current flowing through it so this is just above this voltage if uh, so whatever current will flow through here this branch if this is your on then you know, what will happen let's assume that uh, when this uh, this transistor q1 becomes on so uh, let's say this requires 0.6 or 0.7 volts above this point so let's say this is sufficient enough because if we are applying let's say 4.4 volt here so 4.4 volt is applied here uh, so this q1 becomes on so if this q1 becomes on then what will happen the voltage drops so whatever vbe is there for q1 that you subtract from this particular so the voltage available on this transistor will be 3.8 volts okay so this is at 0.6 volts okay so this is like 0.6 volts drop across the base emitter junction of q1 so uh, 4.4 minus 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 if you will find so either it will be 3.8 or 3.7 somewhere okay so this voltage is applied to 1.3 now you can see that uh, the character the current flowing through this branch now if you see this again uh, let me explain it if this is your 3.7 or 3.3 and if this is 4 volt so this is connected to a fixed voltage let's say here in this case it is in between your high and low so what happens exactly in between the high and the low voltage so the high voltage is 4.4 and this is 3.6 so you have taken it as 4 volts so now what you see uh, what you can see is if this voltage is 3.7 or 3.8 volts so then this voltage is not this voltage difference between the base of the q2 and the emitter of q2 is not sufficient to drive this q2 on okay because this difference is only 0.2 or 0.3 volts so this is not sufficient because a transistor requires approximately if it is a silicon made transistor then it requires 0.6 or 0.7 volt across this transistor okay um, and this as this voltage is not sufficient so this branch will be off right so if this branch is off then you can see that whatever is the voltage available is available here also so if this voltage is available then this transistor will be on if this transistor is on then this point gets connected to v out so you can see that whatever is voltage available is here you get the same voltage here right now the same voltage you have applied here as well so you are getting this voltage here they will be same because this voltage drop i am assuming approximately 0.2 volts vce okay of q4 so this will be approximately equal to vcc okay it will be considered as vcc okay now and the other thing is uh, this voltage so what about this voltage so this voltage if you see this transistor was on so if this transistor is on then the current flowing through this branch will have some drop in this voltage so this is if at 5 volt and this is at so after a drop of 5 volt if you see then this particular branch will be so you can see that uh, this branch so this particular the base of the q3 will not be at 5 volts because you see this earlier this branch was off so whatever voltage was available here the same voltage was available here but here in this case the current is flowing through this branch okay so if the current is flowing through this branch 
then this point is will not be at 5 volts it will be less than 5 volts and that will be i mean how you can find this voltage you can find this voltage uh, let's say if this voltage is 5 volts so if you subtract uh, the voltage drop across this then you'll uh, so 5 minus this voltage drop across r1 vr1 will give you vc1 so how to find this voltage drop you can find it by the current flowing through this path and uh, how to find this the current flowing through this path so whatever was the voltage across this so we have found that it was uh, this voltage was around 3.8 volts right uh, so this if because this is like 4.4 you have applied and this is if 0.6 so then this is your 3.8 is it so 3.8 or uh, if it is 0.7 you have you consider will be 3.7 so the the current flowing through this branch will be something like uh, 4. Point, uh, sorry 3.7 divided by 1.3 or 3.8 divided by 1.3 so this will be approximately 3 milliamperes okay so if i assume it uh, to be like 1.3 and that to be 3.8 so let's assume that it is so it is calculated here also so it is 2.9 so this is what you can see that it is calculated here so this is 2.92 milliamperes so if you so you see whatever current is flowing through this branch if you apply the uh, uh, kcl so whatever current is coming at this nodes will only be go, will only go through this node so as no current is coming through this node this branch so then whatever current flowing through this branch will be exactly equal to the current flowing in this branch so this current will be same as the current flowing in this branch okay so this current you can find and uh, you can multiply that current with the resistance of this branch and you can find that what is the voltage drop across this so we found that this voltage drop will be uh, this particular thing if you solve the equation then the voltage available at vc1 will be equal to 4.12 okay now if this is 4.12 and you assume that this voltage is uh, 0.6 volts so 4.2 4.12 minus 0.6 will be something around 3.52 volts right so you see this voltage and we have assumed that 3.6 is our low voltage so this voltage is coming approximately in this near to this range okay in fact it is less than this so you see this voltage we are saying uh, that this is low voltage okay and this was high uh, so this was the reason that uh, because i mean this was the reason why we have chosen these two voltages low and high voltage high and low voltage very near to each other because this particular arrangement will provide that only to us and this is what the emitter coupled logic is because here in this case the two emitters are coupled with each other that is why it is called emitter coupled logic okay so this was the uh, working principle of emitter coupled logic so now the characteristics if you understand so the characteristics of this of this circuit emitter coupled logic is propagation delay so it provides very small propagation delay and uh, it is the fastest logic family okay and it provides you both the operations okay? and uh, you you understood the operation so i have already told you that in this circuits what happens the two gates are uh, whatever you get is uh, like if you are applying if you, if you made an inverter then uh, here we get the buffer output so whatever input we apply here the same output we get here whereas whatever out input you apply here you get the opposite of that so if you are if you are implementing a not nor gate or the or gate so you'll get both the outputs with this so this was uh, the thing about emitter coupled logic now the advantages and disadvantages of emitter coupled logic are something like this so it changes advantages are like it changes its state very quickly have high fan out then it have uh, low gate delay so that is why it is the fastest one okay and the uh, it draws constant current from the because you use a differential amplifier so constant current to draw off the differential amplifier minimizes delay and glitches okay due to the supply line inductance so uh, the delay is very less in this case okay but what is the this what are the disadvantages so the disadvantages are that uh, uh, in this case each gate continuously draws current because you are using two gates simultaneously uh, nor and or so although the circuit is reduced the amount of uh, hardware which you require to implement the circuit is very small so that is the advantage but then uh, the power dissipation will be more in this case because the two circuits will be continuously in operation okay so if you are not uh, let's say only want to use one circuit then uh, there will be a, uh, a significant loss of the power in this case okay and uh, ecl 
uh, have low noise margins also okay so because of that because the voltage difference in which it operates uh, the two voltages high and low are very close to each other so that is why this circuit have uh, do not have very high noise margins now let us uh, see the last logic family which is the most popular nowadays and it is used in all the uh, the circuits which we, whichever circuits we use so whether it is uh, computers or uh, the modern devices modern electronic handheld devices so all these devices use cmos circuits in it so the cmos circuits uh, were invented somewhere in 1963 and uh, these are called these are made up of two circuits simultaneously they are called complementary metal oxide semiconductor field effector transistors so if you talk about the field effect transistors then are then there are two field effect transistors one is an mos field effect transistor the other is a p mos field effect transistor and this are the unipolar devices because the charge carriers are only of one type in this devices either n n electrons or either holes okay either electrons or holes uh, and but in cmos what we do we use both the transistors simultaneously okay so we use both pmos and nmos simultaneously and they are fabricated on a same ic and because of that it is called cmos circuit because nmos and uh, pmos both are there and because of this uh, what happens uh, in the cmos circuit the power dissipation the biggest advantage of cmos circuits is that it of it gives you minimum power dissipation so the power dissipation of this circuit especially in the static mode it is like static mode it is almost zero okay and this logic family is used for analog application analog circuit not only for the digital circuits but also for the analog circuits okay and uh, so let's see the uh, how it looks like so other logic families we have seen Uh, this logic family, the working principle is very simple. It's not difficult, and this logic family, the basic building block is also in this logic family. The uh, the basic building block is <coughs> our inverter, okay, or the NOT gate. So in this logic family, what happens? We have, uh, like say, as I have already told you, that we use two gates simultaneously, okay, or uh, two uh, MOSFETs simultaneously, not the gates. So two MOSFETs are the PMOS. So this is the symbol for your PMOS, and this is your NMOS. So we use a NMOS and a PMOS together, and this are connected with each other. So this bubble shows you your PMOS. So the the three terminals in your MOSFET are gate. So this terminal is called your gate. As in case of uh, BJT, the three terminals are emitter, base, and collector. Here in this case, uh, there are three other. I mean three terminals like the gate. So base terminal. whatever was the base terminal in there in case of uh, bipolar transistors so uh, the same function what uh, uh, this gate of whatever the base of uh, bipolar transistor do so the same function is done by the gate here okay the other two terminals are this is called the uh, source terminal there is the other terminal is called the drain terminal so in the other courses uh, you have studied that why they are this okay base uh, gate source and drain so what we do to form a cmos circuit we connect the drain drains of the two circuits uh, two mosfets together so this is the drain of your nmos and this is the drain of the pmos which are connected together so this uh, where this two drains gets connected from there we take the output and where the two gates are connected to each other there we give we there we give the inputs and these are the two uh, uh, two uh, supply lines which can uh, you can say so this is your ground supply line and this is your uh the supply line which you can which you call vdd okay so the circuit is connected between the supply line and the ground and this is your input and this is your output so this is how your circuit looks like so what happens when you supply some input here a let's say it becomes high so if a is high then the operation is this circuit because this pmos is exactly opposite of nmos so if this is on this will be off okay you know from your other courses that how this op, uh, how this happens so uh, as the threshold voltage is positive for this gate and this is negative for this gate so as you apply a high voltage here so pmos this nmos will work nmos will be on and pmos will be off so if nmos is off on then q gets connected to uh, uh, the sub, this uh, ground line 
via this N MOS and therefore you can see if this is high then as this output gets connected to the ground line so then output will be low okay whereas when A is low so if you apply uh, low voltage here 0 volt then this MOSFET PMOS will be on and N MOS will be off so if PMOS is on then the Q gets or the output gets connected to uh, the VDD via this PMOS and as you can see that this Q is get connect, gets connected to VDD therefore Q becomes high okay so when input is low output is high so this is what the basic uh, operation of this circuit and it shows that when input is low output is high and if input is high output will be low so it shows that it, it works as an inverter now if you can uh, do this then we can implement all the other circuits with the help of this logic family so now what are the advantages and disadvantages of this logic family so this noise this logic family provides very no, uh, very high noise immunity okay and the static power dissipation is very low or zero in this case okay and that is why you see that when you keep your electronic devices or your mobile in static mode okay uh, so then the battery uh, backup is very long uh, do not get the battery do not get discharged very quickly and even if you keep on using it throughout the day still you can operate your devices very well on the battery so that it is because of uh, the reason is this devices this all these uh, modern electronic devices works on your uh, CMOS circuits because of that you can operate them very long on the battery okay so the battery life is very long in case of CMOS inverters okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, these are the advantages of CMOS circuits and the other dis other advantage of CMOS circuits is that uh, with the help of CMOS circuits we can make um, we can uh, we can the circuit density will be can be very high that is we can in, we can uh, manufacture or we can fabricate many number of uh, CMOS transistors on a very small area okay so that is what it means it offers that advantage also that is why uh, our modern devices are so compact but still it gives so much functionalities whereas the biggest disadvantage of uh, CMOS circuits are that they are very vulnerable to your electrostatic discharge so if you just uh, uh, touch the CMOS uh, CMOS uh, CMOS with your hand then if you just keep uh, just pick the CMOS circuit in your hand or if you just touch the legs of an IC which is a CMOS IC then it will it may burn out okay and it will may it may not be useful later on okay so uh, while dealing with the CMOS circuits we have to be very cautious and we don't even touch those ICs with the hand okay so these are uh, this is the biggest disadvantage of our CMOS circuits so with this uh, I think we have completed all the major type of uh, anti, uh, this logic families so uh, in last if we compare the basic various logic families the important ones TTL, ECL and the CMOS so you can see that uh, the TTL uh, logic family the basic circuit is NAND okay ECL you can make it NOT gate OR or NOR okay CMOS NAND or NOR uh, we have seen that it is uh, inverter here in this case so you can make them like this so the fan in and fan capabilities fan in fan out capabilities are also given here so you can see that uh, the fan in fan out capacity is highest in case of TTL oh sorry it is uh, almost 12 to 14 in this case whereas for ECL and CMOS the fan in fan in and uh, fan in capacity is greater than 10 whereas the fan out capacity is highest in case of CMOS okay uh, and the power dissipation is is least in case of your CMOS inverters CMOS inverters okay is the noise margin if you see then that noise margin is also very high in case of CMOS inverters and the propagation delay if you see that the propagation delay is very small in case of your ECL and this are that is why it is the fastest logic family okay then the propagation delay uh, is very high in case of CMOS circuits why because it have some capacitance in it and because of which the stored charge is very much very high and because of which the RC delay time constant will be high and the circuit have higher delays uh, and what about the noise immunity so the uh, noise immunity offered is highest in case of CMOS circuits so this is what the comparison between the three important logic families so I hope uh, we have completed all the things major things in this uh, chapter or in this unit 
so you can refer the book anand kumar for this particular chapter also i have tried to uh, show as many things as i can in uh, minimum time so you can try uh, some of the questions given in the book also and those questions will be important and if you have any doubt in the uh, those questions solving in uh, solving those questions you can ask to me uh, you can ask to me in the tutorial you can discuss those questions to me uh, with me in the tutorial class okay uh, i was not able to show you those questions in these slides because uh, i was not uh, having those questions in these slides okay so that is what the reason is i was difficult to draw those diagrams and uh, because of that so if you help me out in drawing the diagrams or if you just refer the book directly and if you show that book in the epp at the tutorial class then i'll be able to solve or explain the numericals there in that uh, class tutorial class so we'll understand those things in that class so overall thank you for this uh, for listening this lecture and in the next lecture we will start a new unit thank you everyone thank you